Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport uh, continues today. We're going to turn our attention to Greco, that discipline, the oldest of disciplines in the sport of wrestling. Our guest is Johnny Stefanowitz, Sergeant Johnny Stefanowitz of the United States Marine Corps. Johnny, how are you? Pretty good, Scott. Yourself? Good. Is it okay I don't always address you as Sergeant? That's okay for now. Okay, for now. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's you, uh, it's nice to get back. You walked away from the world team trials as a national team member and trials finalists this year. You had some uh, outstanding performances. First of all, what is your your greatest takeaway from Las Vegas? Uh, I have to say the experience. Uh, it, it's always something new. Uh, you know, it was my third world teams. Uh, that I've been to. Uh, this is the highest highest place I ever got. It. First national team I'd ever made. Um, and again, e each and every time, it's always something new. Uh, no matter what tournament, it it never seems to to amaze me the things that you can learn or see and ex experience all, all in one. It's each and every time you're learning something new to take back to improve on. There are some great shots of you uh, on your Facebook. Um, people took pictures and some great reviews, five point uh, to be exact. I think it's probably the best review. But when you were, um, what was it, five years ago was the last time you had an opportunity to wrestle on the same weekend at the same event where your little brother was competing. It's Chance Marsteller is your, your brother. And uh, talk about that experience of being together in the same facility with the same goals. It... It, it, it's really hard to explain, you know, it, it's, it's something different. You, one of those things you can't experience unless you're a part of it. Uh, you know, for, for us, you know, growing up, we would wrestle and everything like that together. But then once I joined the Marine Corps, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been really hard between the times he was wrestling and I wasn't and, and the times that I was wrestling, but at a different place at a different time. And you know, it's really hard for him when he's in high school and I'm trying to wrestle Greco or, and I, I leave again and, you know, I take another stint, uh, you know, away from the team to go back to the Marine Corps, to the fleet. Um, so coming back together, taking that, that opportunity um, is something you can't really, you can't really put into words or explain. It's just a good feeling. Um, the last time we were able to wrestle together, he was uh, wrestling at universities and I was wrestling at universities in uh, 2012. And to be able to have that again for the first time in so long and for all the things that we've both gone through, since five years ago, um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's, it's humbling to be able to take that opportunity and seize it. Now, you're a Greco technician. Chance, on the other hand, is freestyle. As a matter of fact, he qualified for the Freestyle World Team Trials in June. Um, how, did, how did the division between church and state take place between freestyle and Greco with you guys? We've always got a it's, – it's always a, a sibling rivalry uh, with that. You know, he, he talks – talks about freestyle and, and how it's this and that. And I'll talk about Greco and, you know, how it's a different beast in its own. And, you know, it's, I mean, it's true too. A lot of people will talk and um, try to, try to speak, speak about Greco in a way, but, you know, it's one of those things that you can ask almost any Greco wrestler out there, especially if they're on the senior circuit. It's a, it's a respect that isn't given until you're in that position. And, and, you know, the same goes for freestyle. I've never wrestled freestyle on the senior circuit before. Um, you know wh where he's at, so it's kind of hard for for me to talk about that. And, and but it, it's always a sibling rivalry there. But at the same time, it's it's probably good for for the family that we're not in the in the same bracket. You uh, yeah, I think it's, it's probably. But there is three years between the two of you. Wrestling kind of diminishes the importance of age. It's more about talent and skill and endurance. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read to you uh, and for our, our, our viewers something your father said, uh, and perhaps it was your dad and mom, John and Tracy, but they said, our hearts are filled with proud, uh, pride or proudness for what you've achieved. Your dedication, hard work, and focus are exemplified in everything you do. With those three things, you will continue to shine and then they quoted something your sister Emily always says, never let anyone dim your shine. And I think that's pretty neat when you get that kind of support from your family. Their undying love is really evident. It's, it's a neat family that you come from. 
It is, and it's a, it's, it's a big one too. Um, and you know, ha- having the support like that, you don't really realize um, until a little bit later down the road. At least I didn't, you know, personally myself. Is you know, when when now that I'm doing it, I'm not just doing it for myself. You know, I, I have a son of my own and, and a family of my own here in North Carolina. And when when I'm training, when I'm traveling, everything, it's not just for me anymore. You know, I'm not just trying to make myself proud. Uh, you, you really do take to heart the family and the support that you have around you. Um, you know, it's something that's when I was younger and even a few years ago when I was on the team before I went back to the fleet of the Marine Corps and, you know, just recently getting back, it's, it's something taken for granted. Um, you know, it's, you don't, you don't really think about it cause you're all caught up in the moment, um, trying to get to your goals. And sometimes you, it, you know, the boat isn't on an even keel, but now coming back again and, you know, having a family of my own and being able to see, uh, you know, the family and the support that I have out there, you know, it's, it makes me realize I'm not just doing it for myself, but, you know, the people that have always been there, no matter what, to support me. And supporting you as another uh, person has become very important in your life. Uh, your fiance, Sam, Samantha. Um, gosh, uh, <laughs> just looking at pictures of the two of you guys and listen to you and how you describe her. That's an ultimate support system right there in one person, man. You got it going on. I do. I'm, I'm a pretty lucky guy. <laughs> I'm like, well, I, when, I, got, I got lucky with her. I got, a, I got the, you know, the catch of a century in my opinion. Yeah, I think, uh, I think. You know, between putting up with me and then the sport and, and the Marine Corps too, uh, you know, putting all those together, it, it, you know, it can, it can drive a woman away real quick. <laughs> you know, uh, Tim Hans said that uh, it's easy to notice John whenever or wherever Uh, he has a habit of catching your attention there's just something about a guy who goes about his business unassumingly and yet aggressively what is what's he what's he saying about you your what's your takeaway i'm not i wasn't quite sure at first when i read it i liked it but i wasn't quite sure at first um you know i I try to think about where he was coming from uh you know when he wrote that and you know at the same time I, i I don't try to walk around, uh, you know, when I'm not on the mat with a chip on my shoulder. I try to take everything in stride. Um, I try to keep everything personable. Uh, but every time I'm on the mat, it's 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 just like we said, you know, a couple minutes ago. I'm not I'm not just there for myself, but you know, the the love of my life and my family and my kids and everybody else, and and it it's kind of turns me into a different guy. Uh, in, in my opinion, you know, when I'm on the mat, I don't really have, you know, you can't really have friends or anything like that. Um, and the unassuming part, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, um, what exactly he sees in me. Um, but I like it. It sounds good. It sounds good, but you know what? It's everything I think I want my Marine to be. It, it, I kind of look at it as, uh, you know, wrestling, it's not just a, a fun game anymore everyone says have fun and, and i do i you know i'm thankful for every single second i get to be here um because it when it's taken away it, it it's it can feel like the death of you sometimes now but I, I gotta ask you about samantha's last name though because a wrestler never wants to get caught stalling and yet you're engaged to samantha stallings what's up that's right well, what's I, up i plan on doing that though so <laughs> i'll fix it it'll get fixed i don't want to see it hyphenated dude Samantha, uh, Samantha Stalling Stefanowitz. Now, see right uh, there? It's not. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Promise. Oh, man. Congratulations on an outstanding event. Um, is there one match there? Was it Spieler? Is there one match that just stands out above uh, all others that, that gave you the, uh, the, you know, the, the greatest amount of enjoyment on the weekend? Um, enjoyment wise? Um, yeah, I would have to say Spieler. That was someone, you know, he's, I can't ever take anything away from the guy, especially when it comes to wrestling. Um, you know, we wrestled before. Um, actually, at the tournament, the last time that I had, uh, I had wrestled him and won was actually the tournament that Chance and I were at together in, at universities in 2012. Um, and I, had, I won there, I think, in the semis against him. And then I think he had gotten the better of me uh, one or two more times on the senior circuit uh, the year following that. And then we hadn't actually matched up between me leaving and going to the fleet and then coming back and everything. So we haven't seen each other for a while. But, you know, 
my the style of wrestling that I have kind of matched up um, pretty well. It just took a lot of preparation. You know, I, I knew that sooner or later, um, you know, me and Spieler are, are going to match up, and I can guarantee that you know it's going to we're going to match up again, and and it's going to be even a tougher battle each and every time because we're going to keep learning something about each other, and it's just going to be back and forth and back and forth. And, you know, that's how I see you know that competition going. But at the same time, you know, if that's if we can both go overseas and and start beating guys. Uh, when we, if we're having trouble beating each other here, but we can go overseas together and, and take medals and take names, you know, that's, it's, it's only going to make us better and make the sport grow too. But I'd say enjoyment wise, I was, I found it enjoying not, not so much just because of the win and everybody's here. And, you know, some people are like, you know, it's the upset of a, you know, of this and the two tournaments and everything. And, you know, I can see where they're coming from if they look at just statistics uh, and everything like that. But, you know, we had a game plan, you know, coach Lakitas, um, has sat down with me and, and I've had a lot of, a lot of guys, uh, take time out of their, their practices and their own training, uh, to help me out, uh, when it comes to a game plan and, and training the right way, uh, for, you know, for Spieler, just because, you know, we know how, we know how tough he is. Um, so in, in joining wise, I would say yes, just for the fact that we went out there with the game plan and we, I was able to execute it the way in which we had, set it up and formulated it so you know we had a game plan and we knew you know it was going to be back and forth and there was going to be constant motion and constant pressure and constant action and everything else and that's what we trained for and prepared for and i was able to execute it um you know so that's that's what i found the most enjoyment out of was being able to actually take something take a game game plan and, and sticking with it the entire way through and then coming out on top so i found the most enjoyment out of that uh learning wise i mean i took i took my most the most that I learned was, uh, was with Cheney, honestly, you know, both matches, we, even, uh, you know, I think USA wrestling stopped me for an interview, right. Uh, right after the semis match with Spieler and, and before the finals match, and I didn't even know who I was wrestling yet. Um, cause, uh, his final, his semis match was going on and, and I knew it was one of the two guys, uh, either, uh, Myers or Cheney. And I wrestled Cheney before. And the first time I ever wrestled him was at the open and, I honestly didn't know too much about him. I came on the circuit after he had left, and then he came back on the circuit like five months after I left, and it, it kind of worked out. I, I don't know how it worked out, but it worked out perfectly for both of us to never see each other. Um, and so that was the first time, and I, I didn't know anything, you know, I didn't know anything, you know, astronomical about how he wrestled or anything. And, and I went there with, with uh, one game plan, and it, it went horrible for me. Uh, I think he threw me for four twice, and then turn me or lift me or something like that. And the match was over and I was like, I didn't, I didn't know what the hell just happened. <laughs> and it, it was, uh, then, you know, I had to come back and I think I wrestled him at Schultz and I, I think I got him for four and then he beat me like, uh, seven to four or something like that, or maybe eight to four. I'm not, I'm not quite sure of the exact score, um, over there at Schultz and coming here, you know, we, we had set up a game plan, but I wasn't, I didn't know for sure if I was going to wrestle him and, and how to do it. Cause you know, the way that I wrestled, I kind of had to pull back, on what I'm, what I naturally do with my pressure and I have to make up for it with, you know, other techniques and, you know, coming off, you take two and a half, three years off like I did. And, and, um, you know, the whole, the whole word technique is, is covered in rust, um, you know, inside and out. And that, you know, that's what, that's something that we've really been working on, but, you know, taking that and, and being able just to clear a simple two on one, you know, that's something that we teach our, you know, I, I get ready to teach my kid, you know, when he gets on the mat, and, you know, so it was, uh, it was very frustrating, but looking back at it, you know, all the videos are up, I'm, you know, taking the time to actually watch the tape and, and learn it. Um, you know, hats off to the guy. He, he went in there with a the game plan. We even knew what his game plan was and, and damn, if he didn't beat, you know, he didn't beat, beat us to it and he just executed a, a little bit better than I did that day. So, so let's, talk, awesome. let's talk about that taking off of time. Cause I think it was October of 2011 when you first arrived, uh, on the team, then you yep. reenlisted and then you went to Intel. So at that point you leave the team. Uh, so it's kind of a, a career of starts and stops and stops and starts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was. And it has been. Is, is it frustrating or is that, I mean, you know why you're in the Marine Corps, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you made your bones initially in Pennsylvania as a very high level caliber competitor at, uh, at Kennerdale High School with Mike Balestrini. Uh, so it's not like you haven't been uh, wrestling, a, you know, a good deal of your life. But at some point, 
Greco-Roman came into the picture and you decided, hey, this is a formula I want to employ. This is what I want to do in the sport, and this is how I'm going to give back. Are you fully endorsed by the Marine Corps in your efforts, and is your schedule reflective of that? No, I mean, I've, I've been lucky. Uh, and when I say that, I mean, I mean I've been really lucky. Uh, when I joined the Marine Corps and I decided when I swore in uh, into the Marine Corps and everything like that, like we you know, spoke about earlier and whatnot, I, I didn't have a single scholarship offer to, to any college in any part of the world. Uh, you know, and looking at it, you know, I, I knew I, I wasn't going to you know, be getting any kind of grants or anything crazy, and I didn't want anybody to pay for my college. I, you know, I, I can't stand that. Um, and I knew I wanted to join the military. I knew I wanted to join the Marine Corps. And so I, in all honesty, I kind of gave, gave up on thinking that I would continue. Um, you know, when I joined, I didn't know, I didn't know about the Marine Corps wrestling team. I didn't know there was a Marine Corps wrestling team. I didn't know anything like that existed. Um, you know, my recruiter, I didn't, they didn't even tell me about it, even though, you know, he recruited me and first saw me at a, you know, wrestling tournament. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, I really didn't know anything about it at all. So I had quite honestly given up on, on the sport, uh, comp, you know, competitive at least wise, I'd given up on the thought and I joined the Marine Corps to, to strictly be a Marine and that was it. Um, it wasn't until I was in uh, 29 Palms and then headed over to Okinawa and I was in Japan and I learned about the team uh, while I was over there and there was wrestling tournaments going on and everything. And at the time, Coach Hicks, Major Hicks, um, he came over to one of the tournaments and gave me a couple of papers to fill out and I filled them out for him. And a couple of weeks later, I got a call and said, hey, you're going to Camp Lejeune in two days. You know, your flight's Saturday morning at eight, be ready. Um, turned around, came here, and I've never gone back. Wow. At least I'm not back to Okinawa. So, you know, it, it, it's been a change like that. You know, I joined, and, and I had, you know, my mindset on what I was going to do, and I was going to make a, you know, I still plan on making a career out of the Marine Corps, uh, you know, at the end of the day when everything's said and done. So, you know, still have to have that mindset first. But, you know, giving up on that and then coming to the team, you know, it, it was a complete 180 uh, from what I had done. And like I said before, you know, I – the time that I wrestled Greco was very limited. And I mean, it, and I think most high school wrestlers can say that their time wrestling Greco is limited. Um, you know, even, even today. Well, but, that's, uh, that's why it's so important for the Marine Corps to have a strong uh, Greco program because the Marine Corps uh, program has for a long while really supported the U S effort. I mean, we've had a lot of Marines over the years in, in Greco uh, that are competing on behalf of the United States of America. And what an honor. What an honor indeed. Your first tournament back was the Dave Schultz Memorial, and then you went right into the Armed Forces Championships, and then I was on to Hungary. Kind of a whirlwind, huh? Yeah, it was. You know, it, and you know, that, that's something else. That's why I said, you know, Sam, you know, Sam is such a good woman because when I was with Intel, uh, you know, for those years when I was gone all the time, uh, you know, I, I was traveling and gone more than what I am now still. And I, I'm still traveling a good bit, at least, you know, once a month you're gone for a week or two. Um, and coming to the team, you know, she, she was thinking I wouldn't be traveling that much. And I think before I got my orders, I went to the Open for a few days and got my orders. And right after that, it was Colorado, right into Armed Forces and Hungary. And it was just, um, you know, Coach McKee just kind of laughed about it, you know, just talking about how, you can't really knock the rust off any better than this. So, but that, a, he uh, encouraged you to go up, didn't he? He all he did. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have gone out if, if, if he didn't encourage me. You know, he was only taking three guys. Um, and he had asked me if I, if I wanted to go. And uh, obviously, I jumped on it. Uh, you know, that, that opportunity. Because I I'd never even, I never traveled overseas to wrestle before in any way, whether that was a camp or a tournament or. Uh, anything like that, you know, in my youth, like I said before, you know, I never made a world team or anything like that. So I never had those opportunities. So I didn't even know what it was like. Um, all I heard was from the guys that had gone there before that, you know, it wasn't a joke and to prepare myself. So, but I couldn't really find any other way to quote unquote, knock the rust off and go to a camp in a tournament like that. Well, I've got to tell you, 
and we're up against the clock. We we're way over, actually. <laughs> I could talk to you, Johnny, uh, as, as, as most people uh, will tell you. I could talk about wrestling with everybody, but having somebody on the other side of the camera who enjoys it as much as I do, that's a real pleasure indeed. Dude, uh, we'll, we'll do it again. I promise you that. Uh, give, Absolutely. Give, Looking give, forward to it. Give my best to your family, Chance, uh, Sam, everybody. And if you ever get a chance to go back, remember Mike Balistrini and Kennerdale High School, where it really started to open up for you, they can always use a good inspirational visit from a real hero, and that's the United States Marine. Congratulations, Sergeant. I appreciate your time today. And uh, I know that uh, you're going to benefit the Marine Corps, but you're going to benefit the United States of America by being a positive influence on the youth of our country. Thank you so much for the time today. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. How Take many, care. How many pull-ups can you do? <laughs> Quite a few. Okay. <laughs> Quite a few. That's one of my yeah. favorite things. Every time I, I go do an event, I'm looking, I'm looking. I hosted the uh, NCAA Fan Fest this year. And there are always guys, you know, I can, I can do 25 or 30. No, no you can't. <laughs> but you got to take the challenge. you got to know what the goals are, right? It, it kind of depends on the type of pull-up that you're talking about, too. You know? <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's, the biggest, that's the biggest thing right there is the type of pull-up that, that, we're, that we're asking for. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised if someone says they can do like 60 pull-ups or something like that. But, uh, yeah, we, 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 do those, we, we do them, you know, every now and then over here in the Marine Corps. <laughs> yeah, every now and then. The every pressure to succeed, he's holding up well. Our guest has been Johnny Stefanowitz, and uh, we'll do it again soon. I'm confident of that. Best of luck to you, young man. Appreciate the honor talking to you live on base as well. God bless. Absolutely. Thank you. Take care, Scott.